All right, so this is a basic tutorial covering some uh, getting stuff out of Rhino um, and onto a laser cutter. I'm going to show you guys how to get this set up both on Rhino and in Illustrator, uh, depending on what interface you're preferring. And this is for uh, the more modern universal uh, laser systems interface. So, all right, so uh, continuing this project, this diagram probably looks familiar if you've been watching some of the other videos. Um, but this is essentially the laser cutout file for this. So we have an eight and a half by eleven that this is going to then get cut out of. Uh, that we're going to come here and join these curves together, so that uh, the laser cutter will know what's inside and what's outside based on the closed curve information. Um, so the first thing we need to do, if we're going to, I'm going to show you guys how to do this in Rhino first, and then in Illustrator. Uh, we need to know the bed size of the laser cutter. The laser cutter that I'm going to be using is has a bed size of 24 uh, inches wide by 18 inches tall. Okay, so that's going to be this. Um, now, it's important to note when you guys are setting up files for the laser cutter that uh, it has an order of operations. Uh, it's going to cut black first, then red, then green. And um, as you guys keep diving into the settings, you can do that. One thing it will not cut is white. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on uh, the white layer here because it's going to recognize this as our printable color. So it won't print our border. Basically, it won't laser cut the outside of the, the piece, which we don't need anyways. All right, and so I have this, and this is obviously on a layer that's colored black. I can use that. Uh, Rhino by default is an RGB, so we can go to red if we want to cut it in red. Uh, we can go ahead and get that set up, and it'll automatically translate uh, based on how you have the object property set up for your curves. So you want display color by layer, print color is also by layer. All right, uh, so what we can do is from Rhino, once we have all of this laid out, um, this is obviously at a scale. Uh, if we look at our units, this is in inches. Uh, so we can go ahead and confirm that, uh, and then we can go ahead and basically hit Control P to print. And uh, I already have the the laser cutter drivers here selected in here. And what we can do is, uh, if you scroll down, uh, if you are the first time to set up, uh, this is all going to be nested, you know, unnest view and output. Uh, so you want to scroll down. The first thing you want to make sure is your scale is right. Uh, there's a scale to fit setting that. Uh, this, in general, uh, it'll visually get you in the neighborhood sometimes, but uh, you want to make sure you're cutting one to one, uh, essentially. Uh, and then you can, once you have done that, then we can move that, and you can see the window here. Uh, we need our object snaps on to grab the corners of this, so we can grab that snap to the point, and we and it immediately snaps to our frame. Uh, something you're going to want to note when you guys are actually setting this up is that uh, you want to have a, the bed of the laser cutter is not mounted in the actual machine, so you want to have some wiggle room running around the outside of this. So whatever you're going to be cutting, you're going to want to actually offset that in. You're never going to make it edge to edge. Uh, so what we can then do is we're ready to set up the laser cutter properties on this. Uh, so we click the properties button here, uh, and what's usually going to pop up is the manual control, and this is where we start to set the power, speed, and PPI. Uh, now, uh, this Sometimes in discussing this, there's some confusion about scoring and, and cutting and rastering. There's a bunch of different features in here that you can do. Um, scoring is basically just vector cutting uh, at a lower power, so it's not cutting all the way through. Uh, and then you can cut by just increasing the power um, and, or, and or the speed of PPI, which is pulses per inch. Uh, you can also do images. Uh, and I, if you want to do any kind of rastering, that's probably something you want to do in Illustrator because it recognizes images in a, in a different way in that that piece of software. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have this set. Uh, previously, we had it uh, set to red, so I'm going to go ahead and just select the red layer here. Uh, this is going to be cut in paper, so I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, a laser cutter setting that's going to give me some kind of optimized setting in here. Uh, around 30% power, about uh, probably 10% speed here. Uh, PPI, pulses per inch, uh, is something you want to pay attention to. If you're cutting paper products, uh, you can reduce the burn by lowering the PPI. Um, this works basically like a printer. Uh, this is literally a printer driver. Um, and so the, the higher pulses, uh, obviously the more times the laser is going to fire per inch. Uh, when you're cutting acrylics, uh, plastics, things like that, you really want to uh, get a nice clean cut. You want to max that out at 1,000. Um, if you're cutting paper products and you want to reduce the burning or cutting wood, stuff like that, um, generally, a lower setting, somewhere between 500 and, and 800 is, is optimal, so we'll go ahead and just set that around 700. And once you have these sort of dialed in, uh, you go ahead and click Set, and you can see that that updates in here. So we go ahead and hit OK. 
All right, and then so that's uploaded to the machine and goes ahead and hit, we just hit print. All right, and then from there, what we can do is we should be able to pull up, I don't know, just install this drivers on this guy. Go ahead and pull up the drivers for this. As you can see, it, it immediately mapped onto the system, and this is actually going to be down here in the in the bottom tray. You can, there's a symbol that, that matches the symbol that I just pulled this up. Uh, and so then we have uh, the name of the file, the version of that. Uh, we can go ahead and get this set up. Uh, you can see it's oriented to 24 by 18 based on what we sent it. Uh, and then this is actually not connected to uh, a laser code at this point, but you can start to focus uh, by clicking on this guy, uh, the focus view, and then you just target whatever wherever your material is actually sitting on here. Uh, and then you can basically set that and then using the, the controls on the machine, move the bed up and down to focus the laser. Uh, and then you once you're done doing that, you home X and Y, uh, you'll never hit home Z, um, okay? And that's something you really wanna pay attention to. Now, once you've gone ahead and done all of that, you guys can just basically set this up and you hit the play button uh, and then it'll automatically uh, start firing off the laser cutter. Uh, all right. Okay, and so then that's one methodology of getting this. Uh, the other way is if you want to use Illustrator, we can take this and we're going to go ahead and select this on this and export out of Rhino. Uh, put this on here. Uh, laser cut me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save that as an Adobe Illustrator file. We'll go ahead and hit save. We'll go preserve that. Uh, we already, obviously, we're working at a scale and we've already set up the dimensions here, so this is already really effective um, going through and setting that up. All right, so now I'm going to pop over to Adobe Illustrator here and hit Control O, open up my file, zoom out. You can see that it's all it's maintained the color in the export. I'm just going to hold, go ahead and hit Control X to cut. I'm going to create a new document with Control N. Uh, 24 by 18 and is the size of the laser cutter, and we want to make sure that that's there. So we hit Control V to paste our geometries in. We delete our border now because we don't need that uh, any longer. We just need it for pasting. Uh, once you've done that, we go ahead and just set this up so that we can go ahead. Uh, we need to adjust the line weight in Illustrator, which is dis distinct from Rhino. Uh, so we need to set this to 0 0.01. Uh, and then we also need to make sure that this uh, is in RGB. And, and the file format here, uh, when I, if I create a new document, I've actually already set this up in advance to set the color mode here. And you can do that by going in uh, under those settings. All right, so we need to just double check and make sure that our colors are, are in fact in RGB. Um, go ahead and just max that up to 255. Okay. All right, and then what we can do is uh, just hit Control P again to print. Once all that's set up, we have our line weights right. And turn off auto rotate, and then we want to put that in the upper corner. And then uh, to get to the properties uh, for the laser, we hit setup continue into this and we select our laser and then under preferences and you get the same menu you can start to pull up all these information and start to apply the different settings that we want to do and you can see it actually carried over from uh, some that I've been editing in Rhino uh, so we go ahead and get that set up now we can hit OK print uh, go ahead and uh, reorient that and then you just hit print and then we can pop over and you can see this is two, file two, one of two, file two of two. This is now ready to, ready to be laser cut. Uh, 